and infused inside of this testosterone is an estrozole, basically that uh, helps control your estrogen levels. So mother <laughs> So you watch my channel, but you, this is what you're using. What's up guys, Derek, morepoliceworthians.com. Today we're going to be reacting to Joshua Fluke. I have low testosterone and I'm losing my hair, all caps, one year later. So here he is in the thumbnail holding a vial of test, presumably, and is looking at it. Uh, it's almost like one eye is like doing the opposite of the other eye. It's fucking crazy. So anyways, he, uh, I don't know, I guess he's on TRT now. He's also experiencing hair loss and Apparently, I was mentioned in the video, so which is which is why we're reacting to it. And let's uh, look at the comments section before we get into this. Um, let's see. Might have to reload it here. Uh, let's see. Um, huh? Doesn't look like I'm mentioned anywhere here. Um, Doctor Greg and Derek probably the holy shit. That's uh, quite the statement, my friend. Probably the biggest influences of 2020. I was literally just watching their newest videos when I got this notification. You mean the architect aerospace engineer? The fuck? Uh, let's see. Channel, more plates, more dates. Get in, <laughs> get in here. Uh, super physiological shout out. All right. Fucking my guy over here. All right. Let's see uh, what this is about. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but... It literally just looks like oil with kind of a yellow tint. Welcome back to some content that you probably most definitely didn't subscribe to. Probably TMI for most people. This video is mostly, I guess, directed at men because it's about testosterone and hair loss. But if you're not a dude and you want to listen in and for the info, you're welcome to. About nine months ago, I made a video titled, I have low testosterone and I'm losing my hair. And we are at the one year mark since I started taking hair loss medication and TRT. And I'm just gonna give you my experiences, everything that I take, side effects, pros, cons, the TLDR of the last video, uh, why I take both of these things. Finasteride I take because right here, my hair was starting to thin. The reason I started taking testosterone is because I had low energy levels, I had trouble uh, sleeping, I had uh, difficulty focusing, uh, it was easy for me to put on a lot of fat, hard for me to gain muscle mass. And uh, I finally got tested for my testosterone levels and it turned out that I had high testosterone levels. Well, there's this thing called SHGB, which- so He's talking about SHBG, not SHGB. Which stands for sex hormone binding globulin. Uh, if you have a lot of that, basically it prevents your body from being able to utilize your testosterone. So you can actually have really high test, but it doesn't matter if your body can't use it. And so yeah, your total T could be, you know, you could have a high total T with like an 800 nanogram per deciliter total um, or 900 or a thousand. But if your SHBG is th through the roof because of diet, let's just say you're a chronic keto dieter or certain medications you're taking or certain lifestyle factors, you could have these binding proteins essentially yielding the, to not rendering it inactive, but preventing it from actually getting to target tissues and transcribing its effects. So you could have a, even if your test levels are super fucking high on paper total, just because your production is high, it doesn't mean the actual tissues are getting what they need to do what they're supposed to do. So you could, yes, have a low free if your SHBG is high, but typically a high SHBG is a proxy for something else that you would otherwise uh, want to circle back and see why is my SHBG high to begin with? Because if you have good total test production, like, you know, typically the answer would not be just like jump on TRT. Like I would rather see, okay, is there a way to modulate your SHBG and figure out, you know, what is impeding um, the process of freeing up androgens? Like, why are you binding? Why are you producing so much SHBG? And like some guys, like, I don't know what he's about to say, but hypothetically, if you were on a keto diet for like three years straight, you could think you need TRT because your total T is high, but your free is shitty because your SHBG is through the goddamn roof and looks like a female level. But in reality, you just need to incorporate some carbs into your diet and all the symptoms would have gone away. So hopefully that's not uh, the case with him.
That was the point uh, that I was trying to get across in the last video. And I'll put a card up in the corner, by the way, to Keto Diet Destroys Free Test Levels. I forget what it was called, but basically I showed blood work of a lot of uh, carnivore diet guys and keto diet guys. And you can see for yourself how substantial of an impact having a carbless diet for a long period of time, um, how much of an impact it can have on your SHBG levels. Like it's very significant. I take finasteride or Propecia. That's this right here. It's a little bottle. And then I have some testosterone here. I don't want to move my fingers because it has my prescription and stuff on it, but I'll, I'll show you all this later in the video. Let's talk about finasteride first. How long did it take for my hair to stop falling out? It took about six months. Now, basically my hair, right, at least right here, doesn't, doesn't fall out. Although it's still, it's still pretty thin, but slowly it's kind of growing back. Finasteride or you think you'd sound more excited dude like fuck you're like losing your hair you're just like yep it's working hair's coming back fuck you <laughs> propecia is one of those things that a lot of people talk about when it comes to side effects and they've done studies on uh, rats where rats take finasteride and it shrinks their on their johnson size but i've i've not had any side effects in regards to finasteride still maintaining the ability to lay pipe Dude, so you have no side effects. Your hair loss has totally stopped even while on exogenous TRT. Why are you not more stoked? Like, holy shit, dude. And um, generally just be a very good plumber. Now there are some drawbacks to taking finasteride. Uh, one of them is you can't donate blood anymore. Um, all the centers won't let you do it if you have finasteride in your system. You have to wait 30 days in order to donate blood. Another thing that finasteride does is it shrinks the size of your prostate. That's something I never thought I'd say on camera in front of thousands of people, but what are the side effects of that? Well, it's not actually a negative side effect, but it allows me to like sleep through the night. Um, generally, your prostate can press on your bladder and it makes you go to the bathroom. So uh, finasteride and Propecia is actually what is used to treat enlarged prostate. They have two different doses, one milligram and five milligrams. The one milligram is for hair loss and the five is for enlarged prostate, but it's still Still does have a slight effect on the size. That's been a side effect. I've been able to sleep through the night most of my life. So yeah, the one milligram and five milligram, they're still the same drug by the way, and the actual burden they have on DHT inhibition is pretty much the exact same thing. So it's kind of interesting how they're marketed like with vastly different dosage profiles, even though the actual DHT inhibition is pretty much like very diminishing returns after a very low dosage of finasteride. So fucking 5xing the dosage like doesn't make a ton of sense you know what i mean so like the one milligram dose you're not really doing a whole lot different than the five milligram dose realistically it's like very very close in their effects um and there's really it's not like they're not interchangeable like i um for mine i have the five milligram pro scar for prostate and i cut them into quarters to make 1.25 milligram pro scar quarters rather than one milligram propecia like whole tabs and it's like which is a cost-effective way to get uh, more bang for your buck, but it's the same same drug. I've had to like wake up in the middle of the night, go use the bathroom, and then I can go back to sleep. But it's just whenever I wake up, it's like in Austin Powers. I'm just standing there for like three minutes. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn it up to 1.25 times speed just so we can uh, fire through this a bit quicker. Because with my commentary, this is going to be like fucking 30 minutes plus. That's pretty much it. As far as the hair loss is concerned, I'm pretty happy with the results. I don't really have any negative side effects. Now we'll move on to testosterone. And again, I'm not a doctor, but I'll tell you everything that I know and try to keep it as high level as possible. If you want some more information, I, I would suggest go watch the channel uh, called More Plates, More Dates. There are two types of testosterone. Fuck yeah. One is testosterone cypionate and one is testosterone enanthate. What's the difference? Well, it's just how long each one lasts. Let's see my fucking trend cow ass on the side here of how often you have to inject yourself with it. The testosterone that I take is testosterone cypionate. So this is what it looks like. It's just a little vial of, of oil. It lasts about seven to eight days in your system. So I only have to uh, inject it once a week. And infused inside of this testosterone is an estrozol. Basically that uh, helps control your estrogen levels. So Motherfucker. <laughs> so you watch my channel, but you this is what you're using. Like, fuck, dude. So first of all, injection frequency. For a guy who has such an issue with SHBG, um, like I guess you could actually argue that the infrequent dosing schedule actually makes more sense for him given his situation of a high SHBG. 
But that's the beauty of long ester injections is you can manipulate your dosage protocol based on, well, your frequency based on your, your individual needs. So for him with a high SHBG, getting a bolus dose of androgens at once is going to drive his SHBG lower and presumably deeper and more optimally into the reference range. So for him, having an infrequent dosing schedule might be advantageous. However, for the majority of individuals, more frequent typically is going to lead to more stable blood serum concentrations, even though the half-life is over a week, it doesn't really fucking, I think he said cypionate, I don't remember what Esther he said, but the actual, once you reach steady state concentrations, even if you're pinning once a week, comparing the actual burden you get from a bolus injection once a week versus a micro injection every day or every other day with an insulin pin or something, like you're still going to have more stable levels even though on a pharmacokinetic profile, you might think, okay, well now that I've reached steady state, there's no difference if I pin it once a day or once every seven days in a bolus amount, it will impact things. Like you're going to drive adrenergic signaling through the roof when you do a bolus dosage. You're going to have a super physiological amount of aromatization when you pin a bolus amount at once. A super physiological amount of 5-alpha reduction. Everything is going to spike into super physiological territory periodically and then dip back into the reference range versus you could otherwise have a stable hormone level that does not have these peaks and dips all but you know being relatively stable still you're not gonna have to deal with those relatively wild fluctuations when you're doing 150 milligrams once a week or something and for individuals who like for some people especially guys who are androgen abusing guys who are blasting and cruising you probably deal with low SHBG, not high. So you individually would probably be benefit, would benefit more from a more frequent dosing schedule. So that is where, you know, the manipulation of your dosing frequency comes into play and the strategy, the strategy behind that. Um, but anyways, like above and beyond that, like the once a week schedule is probably the least problematic of what he just said. Based on his SHBG, it might actually be advantageous. However, the problem is the fact that the shit is literally compounded with an astrazole, which is like the dumbest fucking thing that I see TRT clinics doing. So what do you say again? How much milligrams of it? Uh, inject it once a week and infused inside of this testosterone is an estrazole, basically that uh, helps control your estrogen levels. So he has an aromatase inhibitor compounded into his motherfucking testosterone. So his doctor is basically saying you undoubtedly will have estrogen problems and you're going to need this predetermined dosage of AI without even knowing if you have a fucking issue. Like you're, we're just haphazardly throwing you into AI with no ability to manipulate your dosing protocol because it is literally compounded into the fucking test that you're injecting into yourself. Like how dumb does that seem? Not only are AIs probably unnecessary at a TRT dosage for majority of individuals, and if it is necessary, I would really go look at your dosing frequency, lifestyle, how fucking fat you are, shit like that, because you should not need an AI at a TRT dosage, the majority of healthy individuals. But in addition to that, you have a predetermined TRT dose. Now you're forced to take this AI regardless if you actually need it or not. Like how ridiculous is that? We're using something that is potentially neurotoxic, cardiotoxic, inhibit even muscle growth, and we're forcing you to fucking use it even if you don't need it. To me, it's probably the dumbest thing I see in TRT clinics is predetermined compounding aromatase inhibitors into the motherfucking testosterone shots. So as you increase your testosterone levels. And I'm not saying this is like his fault or some shit. It's like whoever is advising him is fucking dumb, you know? Like even if you're going to need an AI, like have it separate, dude. Don't have it so you have, whatever your dose is for this forces you to use this dose of this. You know, like it seems fucking mental that that is even a practice that is deployed in certain HRT clinics. Your estrogen increases. Now, you don't want to have too high of estrogen as a man because you can get gyno or what they call uh, bitch tits. If your estrogen levels get too high, you can get some dense breast tissue around your, your nipple and sometimes it will go away by itself. But if it doesn't, the only way to get rid of it is to go get surgery. So you definitely want to keep your estrogen 
in check. Now, having said that, estrogen isn't a bad thing. It helps with the lining of your blood vessels. It promotes uh, brain function and cognition, bone density, and nitric oxide levels. So estrogen is good, but too much of it or too little of it is not good. So you'd like to increase the ratios of them, so to say. Um, you don't want estrogen and testosterone up here, and you don't want estrogen and testosterone like this. You want them to have a good ratio, and you want them to stay like that so your body can function well. So, and that is why your body has aromatase enzymes in different tissues that have that determine how much estrogen you get to each tissue. There is an actual like calculation done by your body that self-regulates how much estrogen is adequate to support that physiologic function in blank organ. So when you impede that with an aromatase inhibitor that is idiotically compounded into your testosterone and impeding this process because a doctor thinks they know better than the enzymes in your own fucking body how to regulate how much estrogen you need, you can see where you're gonna run into problems. There are ways to tell if you have too much estrogen, and that is through basically your nipples get all sensitive and puffy. Now, obviously, I'm not saying that it's impossible to have high estrogen side effects, by the way, but typically at a physiologic replacement amount of testosterone, that would reveal an underlying issue that is lifestyle based. You're too fucking fat. Your diet sucks. You're not like any number of things, you know, like your sleep is fucking terrible. Like there's so many things that could impede your metabolism of estrogen, impede your ratio of free androgens to free estrogens, blah, 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 or make you have an excessive production of it because you simply are 25% body fat. Like at the end of the day, the likelihood that you mandatory need an AI regardless of what you do is unlikely. Like it's more likely that you have an underlying unaddressed lifestyle slash dietary micronutrient fucking anything deficiency in something that or even like your frequency of administration if you're pinning fucking 200 milligrams once a week and you have this giant spike into super physiological territory and then you wonder why why do i have high estrogen side effect well maybe because you're pinning a fucking shit ton of tests once a week <laughs> instead of splitting it up more so then your blood levels are a bit more stable so like some of this stuff is just manually uh manipulated simply via like smart logical fucking intervention that has nothing to do with additional drugs that could be deleterious to your health and that's what ai's often are going to do is they're not going to help the situation they're going to band-aid an issue if you're at that stage you should probably look into taking some some ai which is what it's called aromatization inhibitors is what it stands for but basically it, it decreases your estrogen so now let's talk about some of the physical side effects that i've had from taking um, testosterone i hold water a lot of people have been saying josh you look a bit juicier you look a bit thicker well you're not wrong i've definitely been eating to put on size and put on muscle mass definitely a bit juicier i grow facial hair really really quick i've never grown so much facial hair in my entire life it's like the movie santa claus with tim allen another thing i've noticed with taking testosterone is that my skin is a little bit more oily than it normally is now i've never really had too much of an issue with acne or oily skin, but I, I definitely have seen more of it. I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I just make sure to keep my skin um, drier, I guess, so to speak. Um, I get a lot here around my upper chest, around my neck, and then some on, on places around my- It just goes to show how potent testosterone is at driving and picking up the slack for DHT in certain functions in the body where this guy literally cut his DHT by 70% with finasteride, but just introducing exogenous TRT, lowering his SHBG a bit and getting his androgen profile a bit higher for a more stable period of time throughout the week, that in itself still gave him androgenic side effects despite the fact that he crushed his DHT by 70%. So oftentimes people are, uh, you know, I think they believe the likelihood is much higher for finasteride side effects to occur that result in, you know, low androgen related issues when in reality, Testosterone is very potent at picking up the slack in many areas for the majority of individuals. My face, I don't really get any on my back or anything like that. Along with testosterone replacement therapy, they typically send you what's called HCG, and that basically keeps the cojones going, it keeps them functioning. So if you want to have kids, it keeps you fertile, and uh, you know you can still still try for that. But um, I don't really have any use for it. Kind of maintains the structural integrity and makes sure they don't. Uh start developing fibrosis and atrophy to a severe degree that may otherwise yield unrecoverable circumstances to some extent. But at the end of the day, if you have no follicle stimulating hormone, you're not going to get as optimal of a fertility as you otherwise could. Like just because you have a LH mimic, you're still missing half of the equation. So, you know, artificially stimulating your testes with an LH mimic throughout your TRT treatment can you maintain the structural, you know, size of the testes? And is that important? Like at the end of the day, I believe that most individuals will, if they were 
fertile beforehand and they maintain a high quality diet model and lifestyle where they have a shit ton of micronutrients, they're healthy, they exercise, blah, blah, blah. I think that when they intervene with a fertility protocol, they will more than likely be fine regardless if they use their HCG on TRT or not. So I don't necessarily think that it's a mandatory thing to use if you want to make sure you have kids when you you know want to have kids. Again though, that circles back to the why are you on TRT to begin with? Like for this guy, he had high total T production. So like presumably fertility is probably not an issue beforehand. For some guys, they have, if you have like primary hypogonadism and then you go on TRT, like what is your likelihood of being fertile down the line, like years later, like obviously it's a fucking completely different conversation. So obviously this is context dependent too. HCG, I'm not looking to have kids. I don't want kids, don't care about being fertile or anything like that. So when you stop taking that, obviously there's the meme of, well, then your balls shrink. Honestly, when people say it's like 20 to 30%, like that sounds like a lot. It's like if you jumped into a cold swimming pool and then warmed up a little bit, it's probably somewhere around there normally. But I mean, if you think about it from a different perspective, the smaller the cojones are, the bigger the Johnson is at least looks by comparison. So it's not always, it's not always a trade off there. <laughs> What's the rich piano quote? Well, the, the dick, uh, dick hangs lower than the balls. Then you're uh, <laughs> good to go or whatever the fuck. Now let's talk about some of the emotional side effects that I've experienced from TRT. In general, I would say that I am less emotional. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not emotionless. I still have emotions, I still feel sad. I, I get mad like anyone else, right? But Keep in mind that a lot of what he's saying is conflated with the fact that he's also on like the context is he's also inhibiting 70% of his DHT via inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. So him saying, this is how I feel on TRT, the context should be, this is how I feel on TRT plus finasteride. But it takes me a lot longer to reach either of those states, so to speak. It's like the extremes have been pushed out and I'm more sitting in the middle uh, more of the time. And if someone provokes me or if I get mad or upset or something, it takes a lot more to get me to that, that anger end. And it's the same for, for sadness or anything like that. I'm more just like, okay, you know, it doesn't phase me. Things just kind of bounce off me. I think I might be a bit, bit more blunt and straight to the point than I was, but that's hard to say because of what has happened with my family and cutting them off. And I'm just general, uh, I don't take as much bullshit or pretty much any anymore. All right, let's talk about the part that probably turns a lot of people away, including me. The part where you have to uh, inject your leg. You take a needle and you pull some out with a, with a bigger gauge needle, like a wider opening. Then you swap out the tip for a smaller one so that you can push that. I will show you what everything looks like. So again, this is such a stigma, but this is what they send you syringe with a, with a needle attached that you draw the testosterone out of. After you do that, you change it to this one. And this is the one that goes on here that you push into your leg. So quad is the worst shot location you can possibly use, in my opinion, of the main shot locations. Obviously there's worse ones, your calves, your forearms, like there's idiotic shot locations that have tons of nerves, but your quad, your quad in particular, this I've covered why you should never inject your quad before. And I had a bad experience myself. It wasn't dirty gear. It wasn't anything like that. It wasn't poor technique. It was nothing of the sort. It was just eventually most people are going to have a random shot. Maybe it won't send you to the fucking hospital, but it might cripple you to the point where you're hobbling on your leg a bit. The post injection pain, even that in itself, the pip from fucking hitting your quad, it inhibits moving around during the day. It's annoying. It can fuck up your workouts. It can fuck up literally just walking around. So why would you hit your quad, especially if you're hitting it once a week? Like why not use your ventral glute or your glute? The ventral glute being my absolute favorite spot that I think goes totally overlooked by people who just don't know it exists or don't know how to get to it. So that is the most accessible spot that holds the most oil with the least discomfort, the least inhibiting post-injection pain. And I don't know why it's not talked about more. And whatever TRT this guy, clinic this guy is going to clearly is in the fucking caveman era, giving out TRT compounded with a Remedex and fucking telling him to pin his quad with a harpoon, it looks like. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it literally just looks like oil with kind of a yellow tint. If you want to transfer clinics, let me know, dude. I'll do it for free. As far as the finasteride, this is what it looks like. This looks like a little Tylenol or ibuprofen. There are some TRT clinics that will make you drive and commute to them and they'll do it for you. And there are some TRT clinics that will mail you everything. For example, that is what I do because all of the clinics around me are like 50 minutes away. And, and, and I think they want you to go twice a week. So they're using testosterone and anthate. Let's talk about some of the drawbacks of TRT. So synthetic testosterone increases your red blood cell counts, the thickness of your blood. You can remedy this by going to donate blood every two months or 60 days. Um, but again, if you take finasteride, you can't do that. No. 
So the remedy to that, well, ideally you would just not to begin with, because there is the argument obviously that you could start crushing your ferritin levels and start inhibiting certain uh, health processes when you over donate. But if you need to, and it's actual like a concern, therapeutic phlebotomy, you can get rid of blood without having to donate it to somebody that would otherwise get like fucking finasteride ridden testosterone ridden blood. So that is the way to circumvent the uh, not being allowed to donate is getting a therapeutic phlebotomy if you need it. Another thing that TRT can do is elevate your blood pressure. For me, my blood pressure is fine and I am kind of prone to having high blood pressure. But when I went to go get my medical check to get my pilot's license, then uh, I checked everything and everything was fine. There's another thing that you should think about and that is travel. If you want to travel within the United States, I can, I can take this with me. I have a prescription. But if you want to do international travel, is the country going to validate your prescription from here or from whatever country you're from. That's something to think about. So for me, I'd like to go v visit Finland where I went to school, but I'm still trying to figure out how I would uh, take this with me during that time. If I take it and uh, I show it to them and I give them my prescription, and here's my doctor's phone number and whatever, and, and they say, yeah, no, we're not, we're, we're confiscating it. Well, then they confiscate this from you. And the thing is you can't get more of it because it's a controlled substance, right? So you can't just say, call up the doctor and say, oh, I lost it, I need, to, I need more, send me more. They're not going to do that. If you mess anything up, if you lose this, if you break it, you are shit out of luck. Just food for thought there. Another thing is stopping TRT. There are different ways to stop TRT. If you do that, your body will never produce the same amounts of testosterone it was producing naturally before, or at least that's highly unlikely to produce the same amount. So. Well, presumably, if you were on TRT to begin with, it's because you actually had a therapeutic need for it. So, you know, it's, it's a lifelong commitment. So it's not really something you should be on if you don't need it. So why would you be coming off to recover? You know what I mean? Like, I guess... You know, hypothetically, if you had a extreme reaction to it, you needed to come off or, or, you know, whatever, or down the line, you wanted to have kids and you were worried about epigenetic changes to your uh, quality of your sperm and whatnot because of uh, exogenous hormones or what that may do. Um, I don't think it's a coincidence that the majority of guys on exogenous hormones have a disproportionate amount of female children as opposed to um, boys. So, you know, I guess there is reasons, but I mean, in general... Um, you're not going to be coming off to get back natural testosterone function long term in general. Like you would be doing it to get fertile and then typically like go back. That's what most people are doing at most. And you don't need to do that, by the way. You can still regain fertility while on TRT, but you run into some of the uh, potential obstacles with what I mentioned about the speculative, you know, epigenetic modifications and things of this nature that are not scientifically proven or founded really, but anecdotally we see certain things play out. That you'll need to think about. Uh, I know that I'll probably take this for the rest of my life, so it doesn't really matter, but I've, I've thought about like, you know, what happens if uh, you can't get any or something happens in the world? I don't know, just something to think about. All right, now let's talk about the physical aspect of, of TRT. Um, I can sleep better. I get more sleep and because I take finasteride, I can sleep through the night. Another thing is that I'm more focused. I think that's maybe because I'm less emotional. Generally, I have more energy and there's definitely a lot more muscle gains. And again, we're not making this video about that, but you can't deny that there are muscle gains and physical fitness gains to taking exogenous testosterone. Some things I've noticed while going to the gym is... So a lot of people don't realize too, is even if you have a normal testosterone level on TRT, and I talk about this all the time, natural testosterone is produced in a pulsatile fashion. It's not like you have a constant bleed of hormones out of your nutsack all day. Rather, it is in a pulsatile fashion. You'll have a big boost in the morning, it dips down and it goes up and down in a diurnal rhythm. Whereas with an esterified testosterone, you pin the shit, it spikes up, and once you reach stable blood serum concentrations, the shit is literally just maintaining fucking flat line, like 800 nanograms per deciliter with a disproportionately high free testosterone because when you pin exogenous androgens, you drive down your SHBG a bit too. So you not only have an elevated free T relative to what you would otherwise have with a equivalent total if you were a natural, but in addition to that, you maintain that non-physiologic looking constant bleed of total T throughout the day. Whereas normally if you're a natural, maybe you'd have an 800 at like the fucking peak in the morning, but then it would, you know, dip up and down and up and down and end up at like fucking 500s at some point. So it's not the same as being natural, no matter how many times people on TRT want to say, oh, it's the same. It's just replacing what I fucking had. It's like, yeah, well, even if it's on paper at a snapshot in time equivalent to a natural, you maintain a ridiculously unphysiologic, like unnatural amount 
all day. Like even if you drink, even if you have a shitty diet, even if you have a shitty night of sleep, you still maintain your fucking 900 nanogram per deciliter test. Whereas the next guy, he has one bad night, boom, he's at fucking 400 for the next day. <laughs> Is my strength has increased quite a bit. Um, the latest I've, I've tested myself was I did 295 pounds on the decline bench the other day. Nice. Pretty incredible because I've never even gotten close to that sort of weight before. Also having said that, I feel like I'm a lot more injury prone because I can lift more weight quicker. My tendons can't catch up. They can't increase at the same rate. That's how a lot of, I guess, bodybuilders actually, they get hurt because they're on so many substances. Their muscles are growing at a crazy fast rate. Their strength is increasing, but their tendons can't keep up. Totally true. And is what you should watch out for if you take anabolics. And so they tear a tendon. And uh, that's something that I've noticed. I've had, I guess, more injuries because I've been able to lift stronger. So I have to dial myself back. Just because I can lift more weight or do more doesn't mean that you should. So th that's something that I've, I've discovered as well. Do I recover faster? That was a question that I got on Instagram earlier today. I wouldn't say that I necessarily recover faster, but I feel like I train harder. So they kind of even themselves out. Uh, I'm still sore the next day, but I'm still lifting more weight usually than last week. But for example, today I actually did last week because I think I... I think I like tore something here, like a, like a little pec tear. I've also had some some elbow like tendonitis there. Uh, for the most part, those go away. Uh, I just have to be way more conscious of how I train. I w Stop maxing out. That is my advice. <laughs> that is the shit that's gonna fuck you up, dude. Like you don't you don't benefit anything from that other than finding out how strong you are. And it's just for ego. Like do not do anything less than like fucking like unless you're a power lifter or something. Maybe it's a bit different. But I mean, in general, if you're just trying to gain muscle and size and look better, like stay above like eight reps dude like that's what i would say like at least i don't i don't do anything less than 12 on like fucking anything weigh i think 195 pounds right now i'm not super buff i'm not super ripped either so obviously uh, what they say is like the the physique is made in the kitchen not really at the gym anyways but so that's pretty much it in regards to my experience with finasteride and testosterone replacement therapy i try to be as transparent as possible if you have any questions i'm happy to answer them i understand your concerns and uh, stigmas about it I don't really want to name drop where I go to get my testosterone, but I'm happy to tell you if you DM me. The reason is because I don't want to seem like, go here, click here today to get started on TRT because it's a very personal decision, very personal choice. And I don't want to seem like, you know, click the affiliate link below, <laughs> TRT, because it, it messes with your hormones, you know? So uh, I have no issue telling people. I just don't want to put like, here's a link, go subscribe today. And I'm sure you can understand that. As far as like finasteride for hair loss, that's, that's not such a big deal. See, as far as like the affiliate thing and shit like that, like obviously I own a TRT clinic and we, you know, have finasteride, we have testosterone, we have all that kind of stuff. But the thing I have a problem with is like he said, when you're messing with your hormones and there's like, you know, monetary incentive, my problem is not with the monetary incentive, rather it's when other YouTubers are sponsored by companies and they don't even look into what they're promoting and they'll tell people to haphazardly jump on a drug to support their channel. So people that are sponsored by you know, these big telemedicine companies that will in mass quantities prescribe, you know, finasteride, whatever, like things that could crush your fucking DHT by 70%. And then these guys will not even inform you, by the way, this is like a fucking potent anti-androgen that will crush your androgen index significantly and inhibit neurosteroid production. And you may encounter significant side effects when you use it. Like, is that mentioned ever in the disclaimers? Like, no, it's not. It's just like, if you want to support my channel, check out this shit not this stuff may have side effects and this is the pros and the cons and you weigh out the pros and the cons for yourself and decide is this a medication or a you know whatever a service worth pursuing is it worth it to me based on the comprehensive list of the pros and the cons not just the pros and it if you buy it it gives me a fucking you know a commission or something you know what i mean so that is the only issue I have with the whole monetary thing. Like I have no problem. Like this is a service that is needed. So there's no fucking issue with anybody making money on it in my opinion. And obviously based on how he's getting treated, we need higher quality care in this industry. So it's fucking great that more people are coming out that actually know their shit and are providing the service for monetary incentive. However, like I said, it's the, you know, the channels that kind of just like, you know, have a cookie cutter uh, speech about something and are just totally on the side of the fence to sell it. And that's all that matters and make as many commissions as possible and do not say a word about what the drawbacks could be. That's my only problem with the thing. And I often don't really talk about that, but he brought it up. So I thought it was worth touching on. Um, so yeah, anyway.
so whatever get romans or hymns or whatever you can you can find that let me just give a quick shout out to the channels that i learned a lot of information from and helped me uh, stay informed about what i am doing in terms of trt and help me make a decision to decide to do that so uh, coach greg Desette, you know shout out to you bro Fantastic channel. Love what you're doing. More plates, more dates. Super physiological. Shout out to you, my man. Fuck yeah, dude. But that's it for this video. I hope it was informative. I hope you learned something. And again, I'm not a doctor, so some of what I said, I might not have worded correctly. If this helped you, click like. Click subscribe if you like my channel and if you want to watch the other video. Otherwise, we talk about corporate and my life here. And that's all. Thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Sick, dude. So that was a good video, and it's just him saying his experiences. He's not a doctor, he's not a medical, he's not advising anything. So this is just him laying out his experience, and you can take from that what you will, you know? So that is my thoughts and me reacting to, I have low testosterone, I'm losing my hair one year update. So it's cool to see that he's uh, following me and Greg. I don't know how closely he's watched my HRT <laughs> related playlist considering this is his protocol and he thinks it's not problematic and he's been on it for a year but i would recommend you check out my stuff actually to be honest i summarized it in this video pretty succinctly i thought so hopefully you get something from that and maybe you uh look revisit the ai thing because i promise you dude that is the thing that is going to be the biggest risk factor in cardiovascular disease of what you're doing in my opinion so anyways take from that what you will thank you guys for watching like subscribe check out my blog more place more days.com follow me on instagram and more place underscore more dates facebook snapchat bitch twitter tiktok apple podcast if you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below, including my TRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. We have patient care coordinators and doctors that I vetted myself personally who understand this stuff with the same level of knowledge that I put out on my channel and they're vetted for a very specific reason. And it's because they reflect the information that I put out and I feel is high level. And obviously you get your blood work done, you get it interpreted, and then you get an individualized assessment based on your own individual needs if you need something, not just haphazardly jump on this because we wanna sell you shit. So keep that in mind when you're going into TRT, telemedicine, whatever it is, wherever you're going, not just if it's my clinic, if it's anywhere else, like you're going for a medical assessment, not just to get a cookie cutter script. So um, you want to find a clinic that actually cares about your health and not just about selling you a product. So keep that in mind. And that is also why we are unique in this industry. We are providing high level service and oversight of health rather than just selling marked up testosterone and fucking Arimidex and shit. So, and anything else I'm associated with, including my lab test panels and uh, Gorilla Mind Nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas that design myself from scratch and anything else I am associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.